In this question, we are asked to use this table to answer the questions below. And what we're seeing here is function notation, where the first column of the table represents x values that you could plot on the horizontal axis of an xy coordinate plane. In other words, the Cartesian coordinate plane. So the horizontal axis is representing the x values. And then the second column is representing all of your y values. But we do see a different notation given here, but the notation is interchangeable. So we'll just say f of x means the y values of the function f. Okay. Now, when we read the notation here, it says f of 1. Not f times 1, but f, the function value at 1 for x. So notice how there's an x here. This number here is replacing that x. So what we're being asked is what is the y equal to when x equals 1, right? So we would want to look at the point coordinates, the ordered pairs, where x equals 1. Right, so 1 comma 4, which is actually this point right here on the graph, what is the y value? The y value is 4, so that would be the answer for that part. Now the second part here, if f of x equals 8, then x equals what? Right, so it's saying what is x when y equals 8? So it's the point where y equals 8. So which point has a y coordinate of 8? That's this one here, right? And so we can see that when y equals 8, x equals 7. Okay, so that part's pretty straightforward once you understand the notation, right? But now let's look at the section down here, these two parts, because now we see a little notation it looks like an exponent it's a negative one but it's not an exponent even though it does look like one this reads f inverse of four so what do we mean by inverse well let's try to connect this to something else we may have heard in the past do you remember hearing about inverse operations well inverse operations what are those we've used that terminology when we're solving equations so what if we had something like, um, let's try x plus 5 equals 0. So if I had that, I would solve for x by getting x all by itself on one side of the equals. Now I can do that if I can re undo, undo anything that has been done to x. So um, I'm going to do the opposite of adding 5. I'm going to do the inverse of, of adding I'm going to, instead of add 5, I'm going to subtract 5, keep it balanced across the equal sign, and then this zeroes out, right? And so then I have x all by itself on one side of the equal sign, and I'm able to find the answer to my problem, right? So I, what I did is I performed the inverse operation of addition on both sides of the equation to get x alone. So to undo the addition of 5, I did the inverse operation. Well, inverse functions undo each other in a, in a certain way. So let's talk about inverse functions now. And the word invert means to, you know, do the opposite, basically. That's one way of defining it. So I could make um, a parallel table for the inverse function where I have f inverse in this table. So these will be all the x and y coordinates of my inverse function. Well, all the coordinates will switch places. So I will just take instead of 0 comma 3, I'll do 3 comma 0. And then instead of 1, 4, I'll do 4, 1. And then instead of 2, 5, I'll do 5, 2, and so on. 0, 4. 9, 5, 2, 6, 8, 7. I think I'm just going to go that far because I'm running out of room and I don't think I'll need the rest of the table to answer the questions I have here. So now that I have my inverse function, 
I can use it to answer these questions. And before I do that, I also want to show you graphically how this table here relates to the original table. So inverse functions, as I mentioned, the x's and y's have been switched, right? And so that means that the domain, which is all the x values of f, is that would be the range of the inverse function, all the y values. And the range of f would be equal to the domain of f inverse. So the x's and y's switch places. Now what does that look like graphically? Well, here's my point 1 comma 4 that I graphed from this table. Well, if I switch and I look at 4 comma 1, if I switch the x and y value, notice the location in reference to the original point on the original function. The inverse function, each point where the x's and y's have switched places will be reflected across the line y equals x. Right? And we can see this happening for the other points here. How about 0 comma 3? Now notice we should have a point straight across the y equals x line when we switch and do 3 comma 0. So that's a relationship that inverse functions have on the, uh, when you graph them, is they're symmetric when you use the identity function y equals x as a line of division, like a kind of like a mirror line. You can see those first four points. Here's all the points on the original function f, and here are all the inverse points on the inverse function. All right, so with all that in mind, let's go ahead and finish this question up. We're just now looking at this notation, which says find the f inverse of 4. So again, remember the inside value is replacing x, right? So this means, this first part here means that we're being asked to find the y value when the x value is equal to 4, one with the x value of 4, okay? So now the x value on that point would be 4, and the y value is 1. So that's the answer there. And I don't know if that really looks like a 1, so let me make that look a little neater. Okay, so that's that part. And then this last question here says if all of this, remember all of this notation can be interchanged with y, means the y values on the inverse function. So what we're being asked is, what is x, right, x equals something, x equals what when y equals 7. So now I'm going to go on my inverse function and look for the point that has y equals 7 right here, and the answer is 8.